Yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, uh, disappointing outcome. You know, I want to congratulate Coach Satterfield, his staff, and his team on, on a good game and a good season. Uh, you know, I want to thank our fans who came down and had a, a great show in here. You know, I always get great support from Mississippi State and our fans, and uh, it was uh, you know, great to see them here. You know, appreciate the bowl, appreciate the uh, committee. Uh, you know, it, it was an excellent week in Nashville, and uh, you know, an experience I think myself and all these guys and our staff are very grateful for. Uh, you know, there's a, uh, you know, you know, head football coaches sometimes at the end of your career, you think you're going to, you know, write a book and talk about a season or talk about your career and each season's a chapter. And, uh, you know, this, this season was a book in and of itself. And, uh, certainly six and seven was not the outcome we desired, uh, to get bowl eligible, to win an egg bowl and, uh, have this opportunity to play in a bowl game. To me, is a, is a credit to these seniors, a credit to the staff, a credit to these leaders. Uh, you know that we were able to battle through a ton of adversity this season. Uh, you know between graduation and injuries, and you know other things that went on this season. So uh, I like to credit these guys for, for, for getting us the ability to get to here. And uh, you know certainly in all three phases today, I needed to be better. Our staff needed to be better. And we needed to execute a little bit better. I thought we practiced well uh, at, at state and here. I thought our kids played hard. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we didn't do nothing with football game. Question? Coach, Coach, you talk about the momentum swing when you guys were up 14 0 and they, they got hot 31 straight for them. Yeah, uh, it's a game of momentum. You know, we uh, think we were doing really well defensively. You know, uh, you know, had trouble moving a little bit early in the third quarter, and that's kind of when they caught their fire and moved the ball in and scored the points. And you know, we came back a little bit too little, too late. But uh, you know, kind of hand the running back, and certainly number one is an excellent player. And, you know, we had a hard time. You know, defended him. Uh, you know, they did a nice job with the run game in some misdirection. And I thought we got the ball running a little bit early, struggled a little bit in the second half, and got the pass game going. But you know, certainly you don't want to be battling out of the hole against a team of this caliber. Joe, sure, what was different maybe in the third quarter? It seemed like the defensively they did some things differently to kind of slow you down. I don't think it was necessarily different things that they did. Uh, I think their D line was doing a decent job. You know, we. we we run the same run plays, you know, tweak a couple of things, but it was essentially two quick three and outs, uh, and that's kind of what got us. And I think if you look at the the, uh, the drive chart, I think their first drive took almost six or seven minutes off the clock, then we went three and out, and they had another one, and then we went another quick three and out, and uh, you know, they didn't get rolling again until the first quarter, so they, they took a lot of time of possession there in the, in the, uh, in the third quarter. And uh, you know, we were fighting defensively, we weren't able to generate much offensively, and you know, certainly those three and outs didn't help there. Sure. How disappointing is it to see Kyle get hurt on the first play? And, uh, to see what? Kyle get hurt on the first play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, very disappointing. You know, Kyle practiced well, practiced hard. You know, uh, you know, decided to play in the game. You know, which meant a lot to him, meant a lot to his team and, and his university. And you know, certainly, you know, base run player, not not anticipating that happening, but you know, he tried to fight through it. And that's a credit to him and his toughness and what he thinks of his teammates. And uh, it was good to see Nick and, and Lee Lewis move pick up the slide as well. Was Nick available? Nick, uh, yeah, Nick Gibson available in the first quarter. Nick Gibson, yeah, we, we had we had uh, Nick and a couple other guys that were uh, on one quarter uh, penalty from back when we were back in school. And what percentage would you estimate Colin was going on once he got hurt like that? Nah, I'd have to ask. I don't know, sir. I would guess not hundred, but I'm not sure what below that. How much did that affect Kylan going out? Affect what you guys did offensively? There was in the middle of the game, you guys called out a little bit. Is that an effect of him not, you know, getting the workforce that he has been all season? Talk about Kylan. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If it was necessarily about product, but what Kylan was doing, you know, some of it was, you know, some of it was the play, some of it was how they were defending it, you know, some of it was the reads and things like that. So, you know, I think we had a good mix of Kylan and Nick and uh, and Lee in there as well. And I thought, you know, at times we ran effectively, but certainly not well enough. Capri, you're playing with a secondary that was kind of piecing things together. A lot of starters not playing today. What was the challenge of that? What were you seeing from guys? Um, I just saw a lot of young guys, you know, giving their grace to try to help with the defense, the secondary, but, you know, they have a lot of explosive plays, but I give them their credentials for giving their all. Tommy, what happened on the fumble? Were you just trying to do too much or did you get raked out from behind? Yeah, I mean, I got to take care of the better care of the ball. So. Obviously, a big play in the game. Um, but yeah, I just have to take care of the better care of the ball. We talked about reads and, and maybe some uh, protection and whatnot, but I'm wondering if there was a, ever a, an instance when you guys.
guys weren't moving the ball in the middle of that game and you thought about putting Keaton Thompson in the game? Um, not in the sense that uh, you know what we were going to need to do was, was throw it around to catch up and, and, uh, and score and you know, based on skill set and what we have available, you know, we felt it was best uh, you know, with Tommy there. You know, came back and generated two long touchdown drives there. So that, that was the thought process. Joe, we talked about this being a, uh, a book in, in and of itself this season. Yep. Um, what was the most challenging part Pleasure. to you and that affected you guys the most on the field? I wouldn't say it was necessarily one thing, but a combination of everything kind of, uh, you know, grouped together. And, and, and I think what I certainly don't want this loss today to take away from is these, these senior class and what they've done at Mississippi State and everything you know, these guys have done. You know, how many straight bowl games, two straight eight bowl wins, you know, getting us bowl eligible and you know, fighting and scratching and clawing through a bunch of the different things. I don't want to kind of go through the, 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 the list of them because they're significant. But at that point in the season, we were three and five. We needed to win three or four to get bowl eligible and beat Arkansas and beat Ole Miss and, uh, you know, beat Abilene Christian. You know, I think it speaks volumes to these guys and their belief in the program and the culture and their leadership because, uh, you know, if they didn't believe and they didn't have fight and they, they didn't know how to you know, battle adversity, you know, we, we, we wouldn't have got to this spot. And, and I also don't want to get kind of lost in the outcome today, the, the amount of positive momentum, you know, that, that we have, you know, going forward with the number of, I think we had, on the field today to start the game, six of our 11 starters who started the first game didn't play, uh, and, and I think almost a similar number, maybe offensively. Uh, so throughout the season, you saw a ton of young kids in there playing football who are either first or second year players, and you know uh, have done really, really well. You look at it positionally across the board. I think it, you know, you know it's going to bode very well for the future. And you add that to our, you know, what we've been doing from a recruiting standpoint, and, you know. You, you stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before you. And these seniors have had a setting high bar, but uh, you know, between our, our young kids, our, our, our recruit classes, our development, you know, I think uh, you know, I think the future is very bright. Joe, what was Errol's status today? I know he got on on the first play, but what was his? He, I mean, he. It was a, an existing injury from the season, and then when we cut the guys loose and they went home, he was working out on his own and kind of digging it up a little bit, you know, trying to do extra. And, you know, he tried as hard as he could, went out there pregame, but, you know, it just, you know, he couldn't go. Darrell, what happened with you in the pregame, and how determined were you to get out there and play? Oh, no, my uh, my knee just buckled a little bit in the, uh, when, when that turn, I think I did a better job on the field and getting that field prepared, but I think, uh, I think I did. I, I wasn't going to not play in this game. I mean, this is my last game as in my own wife. I wasn't going to let my senior down. I'm not just my senior, but my, uh, my team, and those guys believed in me, so I wasn't going to let those guys down, but I'm okay. So. Gary, you mentioned it being your last game for Rooney White. When you look back over the Mississippi State experience, what's it meant to you? Oh, man, it's been a, it's been a journey. I mean, I, I, like I said before to you guys, I mean, I can't do them to thank Mississippi State for giving me the opportunity to come and play uh, college football at Division One level. I mean, I just took advantage of each and every, each, each and every day to, to be the best I can be at this uh, university and put this university on my shoulder each and every day. Darryl, Coach Moore was talking about how this year's kind of been a chapter of a book or a whole book in and of itself. And what's that been like from a player's experience, just the ups and downs from – from off the field stuff to, to just the way the year went. What's that been like inside the locker room for you guys? It's keeping guys together. I mean, I think this senior class has done an excellent job. Our leaders have done an excellent job just keeping guys together. I mean, you know, we've been up and we've been through up and downs. I mean, guys have been being, being, not being there playing games. Guys have been there just I mean, being hurt. I mean, I think we did an excellent job. The seniors and other class and just keep, keeping guys prepared and keeping guys ready. So there was a, a moment in the broadcast late in the game where the uh, camera is showing some Louisville players on the sideline. And they're holding up a sign, and it has you quoted as saying Louisville is soft. I don't know if you know anything about that or if you have any comment about it. Louisville is soft. Yeah, it has you quoted as saying that. I don't know if you have any comment. I don't, because I never said it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the comment. Yeah, so they talked a little bit, of, a little bit about uh, Tyler Hill, and how much did you guys in the offensive line want to get you know, him that record just, you know, as an accomplishment for this season? I mean, we more definitely want to give him that record. I mean, for him to be the all-time leading rusher, I think in Mississippi State history, I mean, I think if we wanted to give him that record. We tried our hardest. I mean, I think he got, they said he got dealable in the first play. I mean, I think that he, he didn't give him one to ten. I think that we tried our hardest to get him that record. And I think he's going to continue to be better, really back in this league. Even not this league, but the next level. So, looking forward to it. Did you curious, can you talk about how tough it was to contain Cunningham the way he can run and throw? Say again. Okay, you talk about how tough it is to contain Cunningham with the way he can run and throw. Oh man, he's a he's a very good athlete, you know. I just had to use my outside, keep my outside contained, but he's he's quick, he's fast, and I have to get him this process.
props for that, but it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. Um, I just had to keep my eyes out contained do my job. Aquarius, they were able to convert a lot of third and longs there in the second half. Was that something that they were just doing effectively, or was it something defensively that was just out of place? Um, I just feel like um, they had to give up a lot of close plays. We kept um, throwing it in the middle, so they were scheming us up real good. So, you know, it really nothing we could do about that. We got to be able to play out. I know the emotions still were all coming off the field, but what, what's this season been like for you? And between all the injuries and everything, I know it's loaded. But. Um, it's been, been uh, wild. Um, yeah, obviously still uh, emotional from it. Um, you know, nothing really in life goes exactly how you think it's going to go. Um, with that being said, I mean, it's all part of uh, you know, the picture and or the plan. And, and uh, you know, it's... I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm, I'm so thankful to uh, to have been able to come here um, to meet a, a whole new group of guys. Um, you know, play with play with guys like Landrew, guys like Daryl. Um, you know, it's you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy to make that decision. It wasn't easy to uh, you know for those guys to you know welcome me in the way they did. And, you know, I'm, I'm forever thankful for that. Um, you know, for those guys just giving me a chance. And, it's, it's tough, man. It's, it's, it's tough because you know a lot of people on the outside don't really understand how much you know it takes. You know they don't they don't understand how. Uh, and, and and with that being said, I don't. It, it's difficult, but I mean we love we love what we do, and it's uh, and a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion. I'm, I'm gonna miss this team. Joe, you talked about Tommy. It's a guy that you see as a young son. What's it been like coaching him this year and the way it's gone, sort of the ups and downs? Yeah, it's like watching one of your own grow up. You know, uh, got a relationship that dates back and uh, known him for a long time. Watch him grow as a player, watch him grow as a person. You know, he's got a wonderful family. Uh, you know, whether it's in the game of football playing, you know, whether it's in the game of football coaching, uh, or whatever he does in life, I know he's made of the right things. He's a good kid with great character and a great set of values. And, and whatever he sets his mind to, he's going to accomplish. So, uh, you know, proud to be probably associated with Tommy Stevens. Tommy, mean, you're a guy too that took advantage of the, the transfer portal and being a grad transfer. That's been a hot topic this year. Looking back now, was that a good decision for you to, to, to have the right and the ability to, to take advantage of the grad transfer? Absolutely. Um, you know, kind of like I was saying there, I don't think anything that you know that happened this year would would determine you know whether or not it was successful or not. Inside the board bedroom, Keaton, is there any, with his future with the program, has anything been decided there? Is, will he, is he still planning to stay here going forward and things, given yeah. Garrett being such a heavy time playing time this couple of years? Yeah, we, uh, you know, we're going to take a couple of days off here. Uh, we report back on Sunday with a team meeting, and then uh, you know, I think classes resume on, well, these guys, classes resume on Monday, and then uh, I have next week set up. Uh, the uh, position coaches have met with the players individually and had a season at meetings, and then I'm going to meet with all the guys individually next week, so I have more information. With them. Joe, all three guys up there on the stage with you right now, they're professional prospects going up, coming up in the upcoming drafts and all such. What, how have they impacted your team uh, as uh, leaders and, and uh, as players and teammates? Yeah, I think when you look at guys who have the opportunity to play the next level, you know, they have to have the ability to get that done. And, uh, you know, all those guys have been blessed with ability and talent, and they've done an excellent job at, at this level of football. You know, it's going to be about their opportunity to either go to the combine or a pro day and, and show the things that they're able to do from a measurable and quantifiable standpoint and put those things together. And you don't need all 32 to like you. You just need one to like you. And I don't know if these guys get the, the right opportunity that, that they'll make the most of it. Joe, wrapping up your second season, two postseason losses obviously in that what's your biggest takeaway we just got to stay the course and keep working you know I mean certainly ending the season with a loss in the bowl game is not ideal uh, you know two years 14 wins uh, two bowl appearances two wins over top 25 teams two eight bowl victories three successive top 25 recruiting classes you know a bunch of young guys that, that, that have played and have played well <coughs> you know 
it's uh, trying to focus on the positives. You know, I'll sit down next week and you know, evaluate every aspect of the program and see where we're at. You know, continue what we're doing well and looking to fix the things that we need to do a little bit better. And you know, take uh, you know, obviously not the positive momentum from this game, but you know, all the things we've done well in the past few years and work to continue to build off of that. I would have got time for one more question. Obviously, mentioning those lists of accolades, do you feel like there's sometimes too much weight put on that final record? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, it's a barometer we've done for the season. I think there's context to everything, uh, you know. But certainly, you know, uh, finishing you know, with six wins and getting to a bowl and winning the Egg Bowl, you know, you, you would love to finish this one off the right way and end the season with a winning, winning record rather than a losing record. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Go safe.